Hey guys, it's Emily. So I'm going to show you how to ice your cake now. If you didn't watch video one, we went over how to crumb coat your cake prior to icing the cake. So if you want to look at video one before we get started, that's probably the best thing to do. Um, otherwise, I'm going to show you guys how to ice your already crumb coated cake. So let me adjust the screen so you can see our cake a little bit better and then we'll get started. Okay, so here's our cake. Looks so good. All right, so what we have here is a crumb coated cake, which means that we used thinned out icing and we just did a base layer of icing on our cake. You can see that the cake itself is showing through. You see there's a lot of crumbs on there, but the good part is is that the crumb coat helps seal down all of those little crumbs. If you have any little cracks or anything that happened in your cake, that helps seal the cracks in your cake. Um, I had a crack over here, and like my mom always says, there's a crack in your butt too, but you don't need a new one. So, hi mom. Um, but if you do have little cracks in your cake, you do need to get those sealed up and filled so that your cake won't fall apart later. So I did have a little bit of one over here on one side of the cake, and you can see the crumb coat has completely sealed that up and covered that up for me. Um, that also helps seal over the divots that are left if you use a heating core to bake your cake. For larger cakes, a lot of times you need a heating core, so it helps seal up the divots that are left from the heating core or any divots that are left by the pan. So I'm ready to go ahead and completely ice my cake now. Um, this is a red velvet cake, so this is one of those cakes that's tricky to ice with white icing because a lot of times you'll end up with a crumb or two in it. And I usually end up with a crumb or two in it even when I do crumb coat, but the thing about crumb coating is I would end up with a lot more crumbs in it if I didn't crumb coat. So I always err on the side of safety and crumb coat, especially when your cake is going out the door for a customer. So the tool that we need to finish up our cake are again our offset spatula and our medium consistency icing. So I have some in my handy dandy bowl here. And again, this is just medium consistency. Medium consistency means that it is thick enough to hold your spatula upright, but it's not so thick that it's going to be hard to ice. It's not going to pull up any of the crumb coat that you've left because if your icing is too thick and it's too hard to spread, you're going to have to use a lot more pressure with your spatula and then when you use that pressure, it tears the cake and you're going to pull up a big old hunk of cake out of there and that's not what you want to do. So always make sure that it's, it's the medium consistency so it's thin enough to ice but not so thin that you have to put you know, two or three coats on there. You want to be able to cover your cake in, in one fell swoop. So, the trick to icing the cake is that you always want to have icing between your spatula and your cake. Okay, so you always want to have that barrier there of icing between your spatula and your cake. So what you want to do is you want to smear your icing on and you can smooth it out later. Right now we're just trying to get the cake iced. But you can you can always smooth it later. So I'll show you I'll tell you a couple of little tips about how to do that later. But you always want to have that barrier of icing between your cake and your spatula, because that's when it's going to help prevent the crumbs from pulling up, and that's when it's going to help you prevent tearing a big hole in your cake. So I'm just going to get and I like to use some people use the front side of the spatula to ice the cake like this. I like to use the back side of my spatula, and I ice with the back side of my spatula. That's just personal preference. You can try it both ways and see how you like it, um, but I just like to use the back side of my spatula to ice the entire cake. Some people like to use the front side around the edges, but I prefer to use the back. So I'm just gonna get a blob of icing here. And typically I try to ice the sides of my cake first and then ice the top. Um, again, that's personal preference, so you can ice whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the side over here and I'm going to show you guys how to ice the sides of your cake first. 
So I have a pretty good blob of icing on the back of my spatula, you can see here. And all you want to do, and you can start on one end, you can start in the middle, you can start on the side, I like to go end to end. So just take your blob of icing and then just kind of start smoothing it back and forth onto your cake, okay? So that's what you want to do. It's a little bit difficult for me to, to do it from the side here, but I'm going to try to show you. Okay. So just start smoothing it back and forth, and if you need to get more icing, you can always just pause and get more icing. Again, I like to do the sides first, but it may be easier for me to show you like from the sides and the top. So you always, again, want to have that barrier of icing between your spatula and your cake. Because if you don't have that barrier of icing, you're going to pull up crumbs, you're going to pull up pieces of cake, and that's not what you want. You always want to make sure you have the icing in between the cake. Okay, So just kind of go in a back and forth motion until you have it relatively smooth on there. Then again, get another little blob of icing out of your bowl and meet up where you left off. Okay, another blob of icing, meet up where you left off. And then you can kind of just run your spatula down the edge of your icing and smooth that out a little bit. Because you want, as you're icing your cake, you want to smooth it out as much as you possibly can so that's less work for you on the back end. So again, just get you another blob of icing, start meeting up where you left off, and always keep your icing between your spatula and your cake. Now, every once in a while, you will pull up a little crumb or two, and that's okay. Because nine times out of ten, your borders will cover that up. So if you have a little bit of, of crumbs here and there, that's fine. And the, you also don't want your cake to show through. So you need to make sure that you're applying enough icing onto your cake so that your cake does not show through. Especially with darker cakes like chocolate, red velvet, you do have that happen. If it's towards the bottom edge, that's really not such a big deal if you're going to put a border on there because the border is going to cover up any visible cake that you might have. But especially around your top edges and on the top of your cake, you want to make sure um, that you don't have any cake showing through. If you do, if you have a little bit of cake showing through, just again get you a small blob of icing on your spatula. And you can see there's a little bit of cake kind of showing through right here on the edge. Just add some more icing over the top. Okay, so just add some more icing over the top. Just kind of smooth that down. And that's the side of your cake. Then you want to ice the top of your cake. This is a little bit easier for me to demo for you. I like to just get a big old blob of icing. So if I'm using my, my icing bowl here, I'm just getting a big old blob of icing out of here. Pretty big. And then you can start from one side and go to the other. You can start in the middle and work outward. It really doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you have ice in between your spatula and your cake at all times. Okay, so I got it pretty good. You can also just, you know, take a big blob of icing out and just plop it down on the top of your cake. And then you can start to smooth it out that way. Completely up to you, however you want to do it. You know, I like to just blob it out and then start smoothing it down or just get a blob and start working my way from one side to the other. If you get a big blob of it out, again, you can smooth it out in all directions using your side to side, back and forth motion, kind of an up and down motion. But always make sure that you have that icing between your cake and your spatula. Okay, so you see how nice and, and smooth that looks. And again, if you get a little crumb, like I got a little crumb right here, you can just pull that out. Okay, and just wipe that on a paper towel. Okay, so that's how you how you ice a cake. You start with your sides first, then go to your top, and again keep your icing in between the 
spatula in the cake at all times. And again, make sure that you are using enough icing to where your cake, you're using enough icing to where your cake does not show through. Okay, so you can see I've got enough icing on there to where you can't tell that that's red velvet underneath. So that's what, that's what you're looking for. You don't want to glob it on unless you're somebody that really, really likes icing. But if you glob it on too much, you're going to have trouble smoothing it out. Now, as far as smoothing it out goes, there are people who use a couple of different methods to smooth out the icing on their cake. Again, while you're icing your cake, always make sure that you keep it as smooth as you possibly can while you're icing, and that's going to save you a lot of time on the back end. Because nobody wants to do any extra or any more work than they possibly have to, right? Especially when you've got a lot to do, a lot of cakes to do that day. So a couple different things that people do when they are smoothing out their icing on their cake. They can either get their offset spatula, they take their offset spatula, and you can get a cup of very hot water, um, boiling water or very, very hot water, and then you would just take your clean spatula and you would just go over the places that are rough looking and just kind of smooth those out with your your spatula kind of smooth over them or use the tip just kind of smooth over any cracks that you may have in your icing or any rough spots that you have in your icing. The other method that a lot of people use is they use a Viva paper towel and these are very smooth paper towels. They're not patterned in any way. You want them to be the Viva which is a particular brand of paper towel. And you can see they're very smooth on the inside as well. You want to take that very smooth inside piece and then you lay it down on your cake and smooth over it either with your offset spatula or with a fondant smoother. So those are a couple of methods that you can use to smooth your icing out once you are finished icing your cake. But the thing that you want to do, you want to make sure before you start smoothing out your cake, you want to make sure that you wait for it to what we call crust. And that means that your icing has set for just a couple of minutes. You don't want to give it a whole lot of time uh, to set because then it makes it a little more difficult to smooth. But maybe just two or three minutes, just let your icing kind of rest on the cake. And once it's no longer tacky to the touch, so when you're touching your cake, it doesn't stick to your finger. So like this right here is a little bit tacky. It made a fingerprint there. And it's sticking to my finger. You can see that right there. But once it starts getting to where it doesn't stick to your finger after a couple of minutes, then you can start smoothing out your cake. Because that means that it is what we call crusted and it is ready for smoothing. So that is Cake Basics on how to ice your cake and how to crumb coat your cake in video one. So if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to email me or leave a comment. And thanks for watching.